Hello, this is the tracker algorithm on the Listing EX. This is a pitch and envelope tracker, uh, which will also generate Harmony CVs, and it will also pitch shift to those Harmony CVs internally. So for example, given a vocal sample like this, you can track that and synthesize it again. Coming from there. Or the Listing can turn into this. Which is all very nice. So we'll run through this uh, one step at a time. So let's start with basic pitch tracking. So just to avoid confusion, we'll unplug those things, which are the, uh, the actual audio outputs. So it takes as input an audio signal. Uh, on input one, which we're getting here from a Disting Mark IV, which is just sitting here looping these audio samples, which I've got. Um, and it outputs CVs or audio according to some parameters, which we'll get to later. At the moment, it's outputting um, the tracked envelope on output one and the tracked pitch CV on output two. So the envelope is going into my VCA and the pitch is going into the one volt proctive input on my for miniature synthesizer voice and then the the voice has got the gain turned off all the way so it's constantly outputting a signal its output is going into the VCA VCA out to the mixer um, so that's what you get if I turn them both on at the same time you can hear that's reasonably accurate let's try a different sample Anyway, so you get the idea. Um, the Disting has always had a pitch and envelope tracker in it, I should say, ever since the original Disting uh, Mark I, before it was even called the Mark I. This is much more sophisticated and much more successful at tracking a wide variety of um, audio sources. Um, so this is uh, vocals. I've tested it on a number of things. I've got some saxophone here, actually, why don't we? Uh, why don't we put that on just now? Uh, yeah, you'll never guess who's playing the saxophone there. Um, which is possibly why it doesn't sound. So professional as these vocal samples that I pulled off the internet. Um, so we'll stick with those for now. Um, so let's run through the uh, parameters on the tracker algorithm. algorithm. The first one is the range. Um, that's going to give you the range of pitches that it's going to successfully track. Uh, mainly this affects the low end. If, if you um, change that, uh, it's going to bring the range up, but the, the base, the lowest frequency it can track is going to go up. So if, if, if you've got a, certainly if you've got a bass guitar or anything you're going to track, you need to make sure you've got the lowest note that you're going to play covered. Um, not much of a problem at the moment because we're just tracking a voice. Um, bias, really don't worry about that. If, if it's a internal fine tune for whether it's going to, um, get the right octave or not. Um, Enver's threshold, that basically is a, a threshold below which it will stop trying to track. So rather than basically trying to track the noise when in the absence of a pitch signal, once the signal drops, it will basically freeze what it last tracked and, and ignore anything that's less than that. Um, and then harmony mode will come to. The other thing I quickly want to mention is the, if you double click that, then you get this big display of the tracking result. So the top line is exactly what is being tracked. If I turn the audio up so you can actually hear it. Do what you want. Then, um, yeah, so the top line shows you the, the note and, and the frequency exactly. And then the bottom line is showing you what it's 
taking that to be within the current scale because the whole thing works within the concept of a key and a scale. So um, just double click to get rid of that. If you want that to come up automatically, there's an option for that and the options, auto visuals, but we'll leave that off for now because I don't want that popping up all the time. So um, that's basically, uh, actually no, let's skip ahead to some more tracker related. Um, parameters. So there are slews available for the uh, envelope and for the CV. So, um, and for the envelope, you've got separate slews for up and down. Um, by default down, default's the same as up. So if we increase the slew on the envelope. Oh, we've lost that. Jumping about in the, um, in the envelope there with the slew. Um, similarly for CV. Give that a bit of bend and in fact uh, if we turn the VCA up so that it's not cutting it out in between notes. There we go. So those are there to tweak your uh, tracking experience to your preference. Um, when we've got chords, which we'll come to in a minute, we've got individual slews for the different slots, uh, chord CVs. And then these are all to do with the shifters, so we won't worry about that. Um, and then up at the top here, we've got the output parameters. So each output um, can be one of the various things uh, that you can generate. So envelope is what we've got on uh, output one at the moment. Track CV is what we've got on output two. Chord CVs. Um, which we'll come to, and then uh, audio signals dry, the various pitch shifters and the mix. So we'll come back to those in a minute. Um, so at the moment, that's what we had as default. And then, then we're back to the beginning. So that's your basic pitch tracking. Um, let's um, set it up now so that we can output some chords from our tracked pitches. Um, now, there is another algorithm uh, of which I've made another video called the Chord Engine, which is all about generating harmony CVs from, from an input CV. So this is different. This is generating harmony CVs from an input audio signal. So um, we've got more of these synthesizer voices over here. So we'll just patch those up and then um, we'll make some chords. So for this, I'm going to need um, output um, three to be a chord. And we'll use chord CV uh, one. And then output four we'll have is chord CV two. Um, there are four possible notes available, but because um, we want the envelope output still, we're limited to what we can have. Um, and in fact, why don't we, let's change that. So output one will change, so rather than being the track CV, sorry, output two, rather than being the track CV, we'll make it a chord note. And then we'll listen to the original audio and then three harmonizations of that on chords. And then let's hear what we've got going now. This will sound It's tracking it, but they're all out of tune, and that's because we've not tuned them. I'm gonna be here right here for you. I'm gonna be Let's choose a different sample. Oh. Oh, yeah. So I've got three notes and the original audio signal. But they're out of tune. So we could sit here and tune them all up by twiddling knobs, but what we will use is the um, built-in calibration that this has to save us the trouble of that. Um, so I'm, um, I've got a little thing hooked up here so that we can hear it as we do it, but we don't need to hear it as we do it, but it's just convenient to do so.
So what we'll do, we'll take each voice in turn, plug it into the calibration input on the disting, let the disting do its thing, and we'll have some nicely calibrated chords. So let's do voice one first. Voice one is coming out of output two. So we'll go to tracker, calibration, calibrate, output two. That's nice. And then we'll put that one back and then we'll do the same for voice two, which is output three. And then we'll do output four. There we go. So that's those three outputs calibrated. And if we go back uh, to the thing and listen to the result. And mix in a bit of the voice. So now we've got the envelope and three chords. So I should, I should just point out that these three voices now are being mixed and going all jointly going into the VCA and being affected by the same envelope. And then we can mess with all our um, chord and harmony parameters. Um, let's start with harmony mode. Okay, so. Um, these parameters are all exactly the same as those on the uh, chord engine algorithm. So if you've watched that video, you'll know what's going on here. There are two harmony modes. One is shape. That builds up a chord from the tracked pitch um, using a chord shape uh, like these ones. And now this is the same as has always been on loads of disting algorithms. Uh, so if you've ever used a polywave table or ST multi sample chords, you'll know what to expect here. Um, the other harmony mode is SATB, uh, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. This builds up um, harmonies in, in quite a different way in that it um, basically tries to mimic normal four part voice arrangement. Um, so it will track the one pitch you give it and then build up um, a chord around it based on a uh, triad, basically, that fits the key with the voice that you've given it in one of the four soprano, alto, tenor, bass positions. So um, I'm probably going to do that actually once we've actually got the pitch shifting going on. So why don't we use the shape harmony mode for now? Um, and we'll choose a shape. What should we choose? Triad. That sounds okay. Um, and then, as you'd expect, you've got a key and a scale. That's a minor. Um, inversion, these are all the same parameters as on uh, the other listing algorithms. And these are to do with the other ones, so we won't worry about that. Um, this algorithm does support, let's try a different sample before we go mad. Um, it does support microtuning with Scala or MTS. Um, I'm not going to do that now, uh, but it's there if you need it. And that's the pitch shifter algorithm, um, which we're not hearing at the moment, so we'll skip over that. The one I do uh, want to land on here is Force in Tune. What was that? Yeah. Um, Force in Tune basically tells it whether you want the chord to be a fixed offset from the tracked pitch or whether you want the chord notes to be actually dead in tune and let the 
um, tracked pitch kind of waver over that as you were. So, for example, if you've got a solo voice that bends around a lot and you want to generate some fairly straight chords for backing, you would want force and tune on. If, say, you want to mimic like close vocal harmony where all the voices bend together, then you want force and tune off. So um, I'll come back to that when we're actually pitch shifting. But this is force and tune off. So the chord notes are all bending in the same way that the voice is bending. And if you can hear the bit of vibrato at the end there, the chords are doing that as well. If you turn force and tune on, then we've basically kind of auto-tuned the chords. They're warbling a bit, um, probably because we're not actually tracking it in the key that, that she's singing in. Um, but we can play with that. Let's see if we can figure out what she's singing. Who knows? Somebody with a better musical ear than me could figure it out, I'm sure. Not that, that sounds terrible. Anyway, so that was the force and tune we were just talking about. For vocals, force and tune off always tends to sound better. Um, so anyway, so that's generating chord CVs. So let's move on now to actually uh, pitch shifting audio. So uh, what I'll do in fact well, I could just reset the default parameters, but we'll go back and do it manually for uh, pedagogical purposes. So output three, I'll put back to uh, mix left, and output four, we'll put to mix right. So basically now, three and four are a stereo mix of dry and pitch shifted versions of the signal. So I'll just um, switch that on. Do I do what? Right, so um, we've patched all that in, so let's go back to and change our harmony mode to um, SATB because that's going to sound much more realistic for vocals. And now let's listen to that. Um, now we can explore the the parameters that affect SATB uh, harmony mode. So these are root degree, the cantus firmus and position. So cantus firmus, that is basically saying which voice is the input. So that one. Um, is that the soprano, the alto, the tenor, or the bass? Often the melody is the soprano, so that makes a decent choice. But we can change it to be the alto. Or even the bass. The trouble with putting the female voice in the bass, of course, is that everything has to be then be higher than that, so it all goes unrealistically high. And generally speaking, the pitch shifters are much more successful at pitch shifting downwards than upwards. So, Cantus Firmus Soprano is a good choice most of the time. And then the root degree works with the key and the scale. Um, to uh, sorry, distracting myself, the uh, root degree works with the key and the scale to figure out what the triad is that's going to be harmonised with the melody line. You can see the notes along the bottom of the screen, by the way, uh, which chords it's generating. So, for example, since we're in, uh, where's it gone? Since we're in C major, then uh, with the root degree of one, then the bass is going to take C, and we're going to have C E G. Basically, is the triad it's trying to make. 
set the root degree to two, then that's going to be a DFA triad. Three. To seven. Um, so that's how you kind of move the create chordal movement even with the same inputs basically um, and you can automate that however you like or if you put that to zero then you've now got a CV input for that root note so you can generate that from a sequencer or what have you but it really does fundamentally affect the harmony um, as of course does the key and the kind so Put that into D minor. Yeah, who knows what chord she's actually singing in. Seems to sound quite nice in C major. Um, and then the other SATB mode parameter is uh, the position, so which can be close or open. So basically in close mode you take in this case the soprano and then the alto takes the next note in the chord below that, the tenor the next note available in the chord below that and down to the bass. In open position the alto takes what would have been the tenor line and the tenor line drops an octave below that and then the bass below that so you get a much wider spacing of the voices. Um, it's just a different effect, really. Um, so that's basically how you tell it what um, what chords to make. Then with the pitch shifters, uh, there's also parameters for the pitch shifter algorithm itself. Uh, there's two subtly different sounding algorithms, which one of which might sound better than something else for whatever you're trying to track. Um, so experiment. Grain size again is a parameter of the shifters. You might want to tweak that. That sounds bad but so this is why the defaults are the defaults right? Defaults sound good. And then the delay, there's an inherent delay involved in pitch shifting especially when you're pitch shifting up. So that lets you tweak it. Um, or just let it do its own thing and figure it out. Um, input and output tune lets you tweak um, the tuning. So if you know, for example, that your singer was singing flat, you can compensate for that and still get some nice properly tuned chords, though arguably everybody needs to detune to track the singer. But uh, an output tune, similarly, you can tweak things. I'll leave it for now. That's the slews, and then if we skip past those, we're on to the mixer parameters. So I say, these two outputs at the moment are a mix. Uh, you can tell it to just give you one of the outputs, and so why don't we do that? So if we put output three, that's just one of the shifters now, and output four. So now we've got the two individual pitch shifters, if we want to hear what they're doing. But let's put it back to a mix. And then we can play with the mix parameters, which are down here. So basically there's four, four voices to talk about. There's the actual input audio, and then there's the three pitch shifters, each of which can have a level in a pan. So if we um, tweak the dry gain, that's the 
that's the signal that we're tracking. And then the different shifters. So in SATB mode, that's going to be that's going to be the bass, and then two is going to be the tenor, and three is going to be the alto, because we're tracking the soprano, um, and then pan, so we can pan. Probably want the bass in the middle, don't we? So now we've got things spread out a little bit. So that's um, that's basically a lot. Um, obviously, if you don't want a four-part chord, you can just turn one of them all the way down. Or, or maybe you just want... So there you go, like a duet rather than a four-part thing. You certainly do. Right, so that's it. That's the tracker algorithm on the Distinct EX.